Uh, hey guys, uh, so in this module, it will be rather smaller uh, lecture where we will learn how to design lag compensators uh, via Bode plots. So just to recall where we started off all this. So in the frequency domain, we classified the entire frequency range into three regions as the low frequency, the middle frequency and the high frequency range. And what we observed was or what we were desire that the gain in region 1 should be as high as possible so as to achieve low steady state errors. Region 2 must have satisfactory gain and, and, and phase margins. And if there are conflicting requirements, we need sophisticated controllers and, and so on. And then the, the higher frequency region takes care of attenuation of, of unwanted noise signals which usually occur at higher frequencies. Okay, so how does this uh, lag compensator look like? Well, by construction, well, I have uh, a gain k, I have a zero, and a pole placed in this manner, exactly the same as we did while we were doing a compensation via root locus, right, in the time domain. Uh, the value of beta is chosen such that it is greater than one, which means that the zero is to the right of the pole. Again, as we did in root locus. Now, in the frequency domain, I can write down the sinusoidal transfer function in the following form. So, I have, I just rearrange these betas and write the sinusoidal transfer function. So, I have beta times k, 1 plus j omega t and uh, similarly the denominator with a, with a beta. And I call this, uh, this, this number k prime uh, to be beta times k and then these terms remain. As usual, beta is greater than 1 and k prime is beta k. So, the compensator now I split into two terms. One is purely to do with the gain k prime here, and then gc prime, where gc prime is just this this transfer function without uh, this gain k, which we already accounted for over here. So this so what is important to note is that this k prime also contains this design parameter beta. However, when we design, it will not really be uh, explicitly mentioned. But we need to keep in mind that we need to design k prime in such a way that it also accounts for, for beta. So this k and this k prime are different in such a way that they are related via beta. So some, some books may, may say that may once, once they end up computing the controller, they say design, you know, divide the original gain k by k prime by beta and so on. But once we just do it in this steps, we will avoid that, that, that complication, right? I just design k prime. And I say, and, and then the, the compensator, the dynamic part of it will just be this one. So we'll really eliminate again, you know, uh, dividing or multiplying by certain number. So in our process, we first design the gain k prime, and then we go towards designing this compensator with the dynamics part. Okay. So how does it look like when I do the Bode plot? So for a typical value, say beta equal to 10. Uh, my Bode plot looks uh, something like this. So I am not really accounting for the gain here, right? I am just looking at this part. And therefore, my uh, magnitude starts from the 0 dB line and then it goes down and just divides. Similarly, with the phase lag, right? so this, is, this is essentially why it is actually called a lag compensator. So the first observations here is that it is a low pass filter. Right? See so the gain is 1 or 0 dB for low frequencies and then it keeps attenuating the higher frequencies. Okay. So, first it is a low pass filter because it uh, provides attenuation at high frequencies and we will see how this actually results in providing a sufficient phase margin. And as we see here, this phase lag characteristic is of little consequence as the pole and zero are close to each other and then even if you look at in the root locus design in the lag compensator, we wanted the angle contribution of the lag compensator to be very small and therefore we said that while designing I should make sure that the angle contribution of the lag compensator is less than 5 degrees. Okay, many textbooks say it is of no consequence but that is not completely true and we will say we will see why that is important and I say and I will also tell you why I use this word little. It has some effect but a small effect. Okay. Now, I will teach you this thing with the help of an example so that the steps are clear, right? 
uh, if I just write down the steps and then do the example later it may not really match, but we will motivate ourselves and learn the procedure with the help of an example. Okay, so, I am given this open loop transfer function and my closed loop design specifications are the phase margin should be 40 degrees, the gain margin should be uh, 10 dB uh, together with a steady state specification of 5. Okay, so, I just look at uh, what the plan by itself means, well it has uh, a gain margin of 32.6 degrees and the gain margin of 9. So, gain margin is fairly okay, phase margin is uh, a little out of, uh, out of what I want is 32.6 and what I want is 40, uh, KV is really bad, I am having 1 but I want to change it to 5. So, the first step while we design in frequency domain is to adjust the gain. So, let us again look at the standard structure of the compensator, of the lag compensator in this case where g c j omega I, I, I separate that into the gain part and then the dynamics part. So, first is to adjust the gain k prime to meet the steady state requirements. Now, how does the steady state error change with lag compensation? Well, I look at k v is, so this is my formula to find out k v and this k v is k prime with this, this k prime here times s times g s. And this k prime is k times beta. Okay, so this is actually k, k, k times beta. So now while I do this uh, thing, so what I find is that limit s tends to zero g c prime of s is one because of, of this construction. I put zero zero here, and what I am left with is one. So on the left hand side I have k v, now this guy is k prime limit s tends to 0 s times g s. Now this is what is this limit s going to 0 s times g s is the k v of the uncompensated system, let me just call this c u c. Okay. So, this is k v of the uncompensated system in general. Now, here it turns out that this is 1 okay, and the desired k v is 5 and therefore, k prime which is the ratio of the desired k v to the original k v turns out to be 5. Okay. Now, again let us uh, see through the construction also. Right. So, this is my compensator design here g c k and then the k also includes this beta. So, this is k prime and and so on. Now, when when we do the design later I tell you what is what is exactly the relation between you know k prime because we are actually not yet calculating the value of beta, but we are only calculating the value of k prime which is actually beta times k. Okay. So, here what I have is this is the k v desired over k v of the uncompensated system is k prime and this is 5 and this 5 is actually equal to the k times beta. Okay. Now, with this k prime well I just uh, plot the Bode again and I see that something strange has happened. Well, k prime is actually 5 that is perfectly all right, but well, the phase margin is a negative of 13 and the closed loop is unstable and I really would not want this. right? So, a steady state error improvement means nothing if the system is unstable. Okay, now, what I would like to do and you see also these frequencies are typically not very high frequencies like 1.8, you know 1.8 uh, things, even the, the crossover frequencies you know this is uh, so, at this this crossover frequency is around 1.5 1. 1. or something. Okay. So, what I would want to do is well you might think why not just use a, a lead compensator over here and push it 
push it upwards right so that uh, my I will have the desired phase margin. Well first is this frequency ranges which we are talking about are very free low frequency ranges and therefore this kind of thing may not necessarily work okay. So how would I do this okay. So the idea is to so there are the other way of looking at this is also that if I look at a point say somewhere here okay at this point where the angle is minus 140 degrees okay which means if the and at, at a certain frequency right I can actually map that frequency so somewhere here maybe like between uh, uh, point 0.1 and, and 1 but I will actually compute what the frequency is. So if I pick up this frequency I go here and I make this frequency at which the angle is minus 140 this will correspond to a gain margin of 40 okay. If I pick this frequency go here and I say make this the new gain crossover frequency omega gc then I am fine right okay. So all I need to do is to identify this frequency and pull this magnitude to 0 here such that this will be the new gain crossover frequency. Now that is what is happening in a in this lack compensator right. I am actually having a negative number in the in, 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 in the magnitude right. So if I superimpose this over here it could have an effect of pulling down the overall magnitude okay. So that is what we will do. So the idea is to choose a new gain crossover frequency where the phase angle of the uncompensated system is minus 140. This uncompensated is I am also looking at uncompensated system with the gain adjusted one. Gain adjusted in such a way that I have my kV to be 5 right. I will talk everything after I adjust the gain okay. Now this frequency turns out to be 0 0.631 like here right. So somewhere here this is about, about 0 0.631 okay. Now I will find out what is the magnitude at this frequency of the uncompensated system which is essentially I am looking at interested in this magnitude right, this one okay. Now we at this frequency we need to bring the magnitude down to 0 dB okay at this new gain crossover frequency. This means that the lag compensator must provide an attenuation of minus 16 dB. By the construction of the lag compensator, so the beta can now be designed in such a way that well the magnitude 20 log 1 over beta is minus 16 and that is well this, this magnitude right. This is the magnitude which I should compensate via a lag compensator. Okay, so how do we, uh, we go about doing this? So if we look at the structure of the lag compensator uh, in lower frequencies we see that you know it is just uh, for, for omega very uh, very small of this order of say 10 power minus 4 or even less the gain is, is approximately about 0 dB line and if I keep on going to the higher frequencies I see that the gain is can be approximated by 1 over beta okay that can be seen from here also and if I look just look at this magnitude this would be 20 log 1 over beta which I equate to minus 16 in, in my problem right. So, so this is what was what was required so 20 log, log 1 over beta is minus 16 in such a way now that at this frequency I want the total gain of the gain uh, of the gain compens gain adjusted plant plus the lag compensator to be 0 dB in such a way that this frequency is now my new crossover frequency okay. Now why does this work right so it is it's just an approximation you just take uh, for, for larger values of omega uh, this approximation works even if you look at this particular example where beta is, uh, is 10 you just see that this magnitude is about minus 20 decibel at even frequencies starting from 1, 1 hertz and that is the reason we equate uh, this number minus 16 to 20 log beta to get uh, the new gain crossover frequency such that the magnitude here 
becomes 0. Now, it turns out well if I just do this that beta is 6.31. Okay? Now, if I choose the first corner frequency to be 0.1 radians per second or t equal to 10. So, if I look at the construction what are my unknowns? Unknown is the beta and unknown is the t. If I contrast with the lead compensator there is no real constructive procedure to exactly find out what this t and beta are. I can explicitly find out what is beta that is that's much easier for me. T I will just choose to be closer to the origin that is all I know that this guy should be closer to the origin even from the root locus. So, I select T to be 0.1 and then the desired compensator will now be something like this. Okay. And I see that the new phase margin is well where am I here at this new gain cross surface I am at 32.1 uh, and okay, this is uh, the gain margin, gain margin is okay I do not really see how much is it but it is like yeah, close to 10 or 11 that is fine. Okay, but what I what do I really want is this to be 40 degrees, not 32. So where am I going wrong in the design procedure? Now, this error is due to the lag angle introduced by the compensator. If I go back to the construction, you see that well there is some bad effect going on over here. So maybe for a simple construction, say I'm looking at a frequency of 0 0.6, then you see there is some some 8 to 10 degrees which is lost because of this one. It is not significant but still it is it is small but it is it is of consequence therefore I say it is of little consequence it is not of no consequence. So somehow I have to compensate for this. So in order to compensate for this what I do is to add an angle 5 to 12 degrees to the phase margin based on some trial and error in such a way that I do not really look at this number now, but I aim to I aim at a slightly bigger number. So now not minus 140, but say somewhere around to minus 150. Sorry, sorry, minus 130. So that my phase margin is 50 degrees. Okay, just to uh, to compensate for the loss of angle because of the lag compensation, because of the angle criterion of the length or the, or the phase. Uh, nature of the lag compensation. So, I just say instead of 40 I choose it to be 52 and this 52 I will find out at which frequency it occurs somewhere here and it turns out that this 52 occurs at a frequency of 0.465 and at that number uh, at that frequency 0.465 what is the magnitude I do the exactly the same procedure. I found that what is that one here and then I go here right okay something is uh, not okay, so here I see that the magnitude is 20 dB, it was 16 earlier, now it is 20. Uh, so I need a different beta than earlier, so beta would be 10 and I just now just again uh, choose the first corner frequency to be 0 0.1 and I have this uh, GC prime and let us see how the closed loop response is like. Well, the closed loop response has a, has a good uh, gain margin so somewhere over here and then uh, the phase margin is quite quite satisfactory it is 41.6 and of course the closed loop system is stable right. So the design procedure is, is straightforward I do not now really need to write down the rules for you well the rules are, are pretty straightforward right. So you start with adjusting the gain first and you see well what is happening so I want uh, the signal to be attenuated such that I have a new gain crossover frequency which is lower than the original one. I am just you know shifting this gain crossover frequency to the left so that I will have a better phase margin right. And of course this is just now, now design procedures I add an extra angle between 5 and 12 to compensate for the lag introduced because of the phase nature of the lag compensator. Okay, now if I compare the time response plot I see a decrease in the overshoot right and this uncompensated essentially means that I am not even looking at the gain adjusted system I am just looking at the uh, at the original plant right. So in this in the left hand side I am just looking at the original plant right okay. So if I again go back to things I uh, well I had said that well with k prime equal to 5 my uh, system turns out to be unstable. So here 
Let me look at the root locus plots. Well, what happens to the root locus plots? If I look at the uncompensated system, like this now is the gain adjusted system. So, this, this, this colors here and this colors here are, are they have no relation, these are just two different plots. So, if I look at the blue plot which is the gain adjusted system at a gain of 5, this is what we found out right? that k prime was equal to 5, I see that my root locus shifts to the right and therefore, my system is unstable. Now, I introduce a lag compensator and with the same gain I am now here, right? my system is now stable and I see the effect of lag compensator, right? it just shifts the root locus slightly to the right. Okay? But then uh, the things are, are taken care of here right? that I am actually ending up with a stable system. Okay? Okay, so, to summarize, uh, at lower frequencies the lag compensator provides an additional gain. So, I, when I am look saying of this additional gain, I mean that I am looking at the plot of this is my entire compensator right? k prime times this thing. Right? This, this is the entire compensator, I just split it into the gain part and the dynamic compensation part. Right? So, if I look at the entire plot, this will just go up with 20 log k depending on again what is the what is the value of beta for example. Okay. So, the, so, this is how, how it goes and at higher frequencies it has a smaller gain and therefore, the lag compensator acts like a low pass filter right? in, in such a way that it reduces the gain at the high frequency range and improving the phase margin right? that is what the example also told us. Okay. And the ratio z by p is chosen to meet the steady state specifications. Right? So, again the steady state specifications were uh, through this gain and you see that this gain was equal to k times beta. Now, what where is this beta coming from? This beta is coming from the construction or even from here that is the ratio of the 0 to the pole. Right? If I call this z c by p c, this is beta. Okay? So, these are not dissociated, this disassociated from each other. Right? This beta actually has to do something with here also, but just that I make my design procedure easy to look at it as at the gain independently and this part independently, but this also has to do with, with beta, right? this, this directly sitting in over here. Okay. And of course, uh, the lag compensator reduces the bandwidth of the system because the gain crossover frequency now shifts uh, to the left. And we always claim that uh, the poles and zeros should be placed close to the origin. Okay. So, uh, how close to the origin? So, uh, and what happens when I place poles and zeros close to the origin or even much closer to the origin is that the lag compensator it creates an additional closed loop pole 0 in the same region. So, it sorry it, it creates an additional closed loop pole in the same region as the 0 and the pole of the lag compensator and which and this pole if it is closer and closer to 0 will create some additional dynamics for which the settling time might be higher as we go close and close to the origin. Okay, what does that mean? Right? So, without going too much into the details, uh, so if I say ch just, just for, 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 for trial basis, just select another value of t right? to be 20, which this actually will place the poles and zeros a little closer to the origin. In that case, well, I think my gain margin and phase margin are good, but now look at this. right? So, uh, if I am away from the origin, I see that here I am, I am settling down little faster. Right? So, this is this is what I had, I had uh, with earlier with t equal to 10 right? and I say I call this away from the origin relatively away and this plot is for t equal to 20 and you see that the settling time is actually higher. If you just zoom in here, you could actually see right? a uh, bit of uh, difference in the settling time and that is due to the additional pole 
which is created because of the lat compensation. You can just uh, just check for the closed loop poles in MATLAB and that will actually give you the exact locations of the poles. That is not really important. What is important is to just understand this phenomenon of how close do we go to the origin. Now, closer to the origin also means that I am actually looking at a PI kind of controller. Right? So, this lag is an approximation of a PI controller and one drawback of this PI controller was that it could lead to instability as we have seen right in, in, in module number 7 and even in 8 that this could actually lead to, ins to, to, to a closed loop unstable system. So, these are the things which we need to be careful of apart from that the process is very simple. So, next lecture what we will see is to design lead like compensators and this is a little philosophically different than when we do in the root locus or in the time domain where an obvious uh, interpretation was if I were to improve the steady state performance I design a lag compensator, if I were to in, uh, improve the transient performance I go to a lead, if my specifications are a combination of both then I directly go for a lead lag compensator. Over here, it is a little different because we have additional things introduced into the system like the bandwidth and we will see how we make use of lead and lag compensators to achieve uh, little more objectives than what we had uh, in the time domain and see if it is straightforward or what are the steps involved in that. Thank you.